coach carnivore Cameron Glover. So we're going to go over his labs. His labs are very similar to the guy I just did, Ray, um, Carnivore Ray. If you want to go look at that video, I'm going to reference that a lot because most of what we're going to talk about has to do with Carnivore Ray. If you guys don't know me, I'm Dr. Al. I'm a board-certified cardiologist. He has almost exactly the same problem as uh, Carnivore Ray. Ray's problem was he had sky-high LDL cholesterol and he was pre-diabetic, you know, with an A1C of 5.6 or I think it was 5.5, maybe something like that, similar to Ken Berry, similar to what Steak and Butter Gal had before uh, she lost weight. And this guy's even worse. This guy, his LDL, his uh, A1C was 5.7. So after 18 months of eating high amounts of red meat, eggs and dairy, I thought I'd get some blood work done. So let's see what my cholesterol is like. My total cholesterol, 7.7 .7 millimoles per liter. This is considered very high. HDL and LDL are both certainly over the reference range at 3 and 4.5 millimoles per liter. But am I concerned? As I've already covered, simply having high cholesterol on its own is not the main problem here. And with that, let's look at my triglyceride levels, which is fat accumulation in the blood. 0.5 millimoles per liter. This is very low. Even though I'm eating a substantial amount of fat every day, surely this should have caused my arteries to clog, right? Wrong. My HbA1c, which measures my average blood glucose levels over the past two to three months, is in a normal, healthy range. Now, His hemoglobin a1c level is 5.7 which is literally pre-diabetic i mean we we say that 5.7 5.8 up to about 6.4 is pre-diabetes and 6.5 percent and higher is actually diabetes so he has pretty bad insulin resistance even though he's young i'm sorry even though he's thin when you're thinner and still have pretty bad insulin resistance it's actually worse if he was like 50, 60, 70 pounds overweight, you know, 30 kilograms, and I'm saying in kilograms so he can understand it because most of his lab values were listed in international units. So I want to make sure that he actually hears this. But if he was 30 to 40 kilograms overweight or even just 15 kilograms overweight and his A1C was 5.7, we'd be like, listen, a little bit of weight loss would help you. He's not overweight. He's pretty thin, pretty fit, looks healthy, you know, looks metabolically healthy, but his A1C is 5.7, which puts you into the pre-diabetic range. Of course, in his video, he doesn't say that. He just says, oh my God, I'm uh, uh, pre, I'm healthy, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And obviously, you know, he's not. So same thing with Carnivore Ray. This guy's, L this guy's total cholesterol was, uh, LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol were like 297, maybe 170, something like that. Also, insanely high. And he says there's no studies that show that eating saturated fat is bad for you and all of this. Literally, I've listed every study you can imagine. If you go to my website, drallo.net slash blog, and then just search for saturated fat, there's an entire article uh, with live links to every single study you can imagine on saturated fat. So what is saturated fat? It's butter, bacon, lard, cheese, chicken skin, fat on steak, coconut oil, ghee, tallow, all the carnivore kind of stuff that they like to eat. And the data shows that, first of all, co excess consumption of saturated fat obviously raises your cholesterol, increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, cardiovascular death, all-cause mortality. Yes, there were studies that showed that saturated fat increases all-cause mortality, which means the chance of dying of anything. They, saturated fat and red meat increases insulin resistance, which he has, and he's pre-diabetic. He's not even like insulin resistant. He is actually diabetic or well, pre-diabetic, I should say. He's pre-diabetic. He's not even like almost pre-diabetic. He is definitely pre-diabetic. So all of that stuff, inflammation, red meat and salt, uh, increase inflammation. And I'm not somebody sitting here saying I eat plants and you should only eat plants. I don't. I eat red meat. I eat chicken. I eat all that. But I don't deny the science. And my LDL cholesterol is like 41. So I don't think uh, that's an issue. Now, the other problem that's problematic is his messaging. Oh, your, your cholesterol is high if you're fine, but he's not fine. He's insulin resistant. He's otherwise healthy. Why not have your steak and eat it too, right? Like, why is that such a terrible thing? Why is that a novel idea? Lots of people are like, listen, doc, I tried changing my diet. I really don't want to. I kind of like it. I lost a bunch of weight. I feel good. This carnivore thing, you know, maybe it's a fad. Maybe it's not. I want to do it. I don't really care. Can you just help me out here? Put me on some medications or whatever. Can you just get my LDL cholesterol down to a normal level? Yeah, we can absolutely do that. And we've done that. But trying to deny the science and just saying, saturated fat doesn't kill you and, and high LDL cholesterol doesn't kill you and it doesn't do anything. 
Like I said in the other video with Ray, the PISA trial, the CARDIA trial, the pre-CAD trial, all trials with super young, healthy people just like this, regardless of anything else, the higher your LDL cholesterol, the higher the stroke rates, the higher the mortality rates, the higher the heart attack rates, the higher the everything. So you can sit here and deny the science all you want, you know, as much as you want, but science doesn't change, the data doesn't change. You can go to my blog, read the carnivore article, read the red meat article, read the saturated fat articles. I've listed a lot of them in the comments on a lot of these videos. You can go and read all those articles. They all have live links to the studies. You can go and literally click on every single study yourself and read it if you think that this is not true. Obviously, it is 100% true. Um, and you can go read those studies and you can refute them. If you find that some study had a fault in it or you disagree with it, then fine. You know, we can talk about it. Um, but otherwise, go watch the last few videos that I've done reviewing other people's labs to kind of get some more insight as to why these people are just wrong. Um, a lot of them have way more detail. I just wanted to do this one as like a quick video, you know, for Cameron uh, Glover, the carnivore coach or whatever it is. Um, and hopefully a lot of people learn from this. If you like this kind of stuff, join my community, dralnet slash community. Grab my cholesterol book, dralnet slash cholesterol. It's listed below. Take my cholesterol masterclass. You can learn a lot. All that stuff is listed below. And send this to people who need to hear this message.